Good morning and welcome into our U.S. Women's Soccer Studio with former U.S. Women's Soccer Coach Tony DiCicco, former Mexican International Monica Gonzalez. I am Max Bredos. Right now in Japan, it's being pelted down with some heavy weather that forced the movement of today's USA Brazil game in Chiba to 4 p.m. local time, 3 a.m. Eastern time. So as a result, what you're about to see has already occurred. We are going to broadcast it as Ford, and we are going to be rejoined by our esteemed panel here at halftime to break down the roster. In the meantime, let's get you out to the second game from the Kieran Challenge Cup with Adrian Healy and Julie Fowdy. Thanks very much, Max. Well, there always seems to be a sense of drama, an element of the unexpected when the United States and Brazil meet. It's not quite nine months on from that unforgettable World Cup but quarterfinal in Dresden. We're half a world away here in Chiba, Japan. This is the second game for the United States in the Kirin Challenge Cup. And Julia, the U.S. looking to push on after their 1-1 draw against Japan two days ago. Yeah, and second game in three days, which is a lot to have for that same starting lineup, which is... What you're seeing out there tonight, Pia Sunhagen has gone with the same 11 she went with just two days ago. A little bit of a surprise, that one. We thought there may be more changes in the U.S. starting lineup. But it's uh, Abby Wambach and Carly Lloyd who are about to get us uh, underway. Unforgettable seeds. Who could ever forget what happened in Dresden? It seems like it was just yesterday that Abby Wambach uh, powered up to head home the U.S. equalizer deep into second half stoppage time and take us to the penalty kicks which the United States ultimately won and transformed their World Cup in doing so. Nine months on, the focus is very much on the next big challenge which is the Olympic Games in London this summer. And this is the last uh, really major tournament for both teams to try and shape their squad. Shannon Box feeding Heather O'Reilly as the U.S. try to uh, strike early here. Abby Wambach trying to power her way through. Wambach off the bar. Well, we almost had a quicker goal than we did in that quarterfinal in Dresden. And a good start for the U.S. They've been struggling, starting slow. And here you see they're just going to try and get it in the mixer. And this is where Abby just creates so many problems, trying to get something on it. But... She is always a threat right in front of goal in that box, whether it's with her head or on the ground. Again, just to reiterate, the kickoff moved forward four hours here in Chiba, Japan, which is just outside of Tokyo, about 25 miles away. Severe storm warnings. You can already see the rain lashing down here. It was going to get much, much worse had they gone with the original kickoff time, which was 8 p.m. local time. So Moved it forward to 4 p.m. And of course, that's had an impact on the crowd here at the uh, Fukuda Denshai Arena. And, and the team only found out about four hours before <laughs> the game was to kick off. So talk about changing your pregame prep. Here's Heather O'Reilly working her way forward. Carly Lloyd in good shooting position. She squared it across this is an excellent start by the US Heather O'Reilly can't quite pick up the pieces and uh, away comes Hosanna for Brazil let's take a look at our uh, case of who is primed to perform this is fueled by Gatorade Julie and it comes as no surprise we're talking about Alex Morgan again today. I mean, she has been phenomenal ever since she's worked her way into the starting lineup for the United States. 11 goals in the last seven starts for Alex Morgan. Yeah, really quite astonishing, yeah. isn't it, from uh, Morgan? She has scored 10 of the United States' last 18 goals, including the equaliser against Japan. On Sunday, if you weren't with us, it was an interesting goal, wasn't it? She thought originally it had been ruled out for offside. And then the uh, the referee and the assistant referee on the near side, near side conferred and ultimately got it right and awarded the goal. Yeah, you don't see that happen very often with referees. They did a very good job on that one, <laughs> especially since she wasn't offside and it came off a Japanese defender. 
Well, the referee was the story. One of the major stories in that quarterfinal nine months ago, Julie. I went back and watched that game yesterday. I've got to say, it still gave me chills, even though I knew what was going to happen. What a game. All that drama surrounding uh, the sending off of Rachel Bueller, the uh, twice taken penalty kick. You really couldn't have invented uh, a script like that. I know, and you think back at how long they played a man down. <laughs> it's just tremendous, the effort they put in. Well, Pia Sundaga has still nine starters uh, from the 11 who started in Dresden. Uh, today, the only uh, players that miss out are Ali Krieger through injury, and, uh, and A-Rod is the other player not in the starting 11 now. Her, her place has gone to Alex Morgan. Brazil. Well, they have seven starters who started that uh, quarterfinal. The most notable absentee, we should tell you, is Marta, who is not here. But Hosanna is, and uh, Christiana, who was perhaps their player of the game in that quarterfinal. There she is, where's number 11? She will be uh, one to watch, as always. Formiga is here, too. Marta now playing for... Swedish club Tiraso, who I actually played for over in Sweden, and they start their season on Monday, so I'm sure she's back in Sweden getting ready for that. Yeah, Marta actually came to the United States to uh, play a half in uh, Brazil's friendly against Canada that was played at Foxborough Stadium recently. That's uh, Jorge Barcelos, who's uh, back in charge of Brazil now. Second spell as manager replacing Clayton Lima, who was the World Cup coach, who came up with some surprising tactical alignments, didn't he? For uh, Brazil, yeah. Le Clayton Lima, I'm actually, I mean, this is a good move for Brazil, a little less entertaining to commentate, maybe though, because with Lima, you, you never knew <laughs> what you were going to get out there. I loved calling those games, he loved to play a three back man to man marking all over the field. It was crazy. It was a very un-Brazilian system in a way, wasn't it? It's, uh, Alex Morgan trying to make headway against Maureen. It's Brazil's first game at this uh, three-team tournament, the Kirin Challenge Cup. They will play Japan on April the 5th in Kobe to wrap things up. One back. Lovely uh, sharp pass for Morgan. And now Carly Lloyd. Kelly O'Hara seems to have grabbed onto that left back spot. Shannon Box trying to cause some havoc with a driven ball, but instead it's uh, Formiga who emerges from the pack with it. And that's a wonderful pass, too. Taish trying to get on the end of the cross. Keep an eye on her as well, the Brazilian number 15, the youngest player in the squad. But this was a, a flowing counter-attack. And that's what Formiga does for Brazil. She is their engine in the midfield. She will pick up balls and counter all day, especially if the United States is going to press those two center midfields up. You see that big gap right in the middle of the field there. Formiga still going. Five World Cups and homing in on her fifth Olympics, too. Phenomenal career. Many assumed that Germany would be her last hurrah, but far from it. O'Reilly, some space here for Cheney. Forced to check back to box. O'Hara take on Formiga and does so, gets the better of her, and that was a decent uh, cross as well from Kelly O'Hara. And when Lauren Cheney moves inside, as you're seeing, she's that left midfielder. What it does is it opens up that space for Kelly O'Hara, and you're seeing her get forward, have more of an attacking presence from that left back position, which I think is a, a good thing for the United States. A few eyebrows were raised, as the flag is at the moment. I think the referees eventually spotted it. 
But those raised eyebrows, Julie, over the, uh, the team today, we thoroughly expected there to be some changes. I mean, two games in three days, all the uh, words after the game against Japan were that Pia Sundaga would be switching around the starting line. She hasn't done it. She's gone with exactly the same starting 11. No, and you thought being the second game in three days, which we talked about earlier, you would see some changes. And the fact that she doesn't have much time to make some decisions. There are not many full internationals before the Olympics. But then again, there are people who will make the argument, and I remember this as a player, you want that starting 11 that you're going to go with. You want as much time as you can get together. You want to play as a unit. So I'm, I'm sure she'll make a full, a lot of changes at halftime. Yeah, I was going to say, we anticipate the cavalry later on in the game. This is a slide rule pass, which just goes astray. Christiana. Saying she wants it to her feet. Well, she now plays her uh, club football in Russia with the FC Rosianka. Four Brazilians have made the move there to a club that is based just outside of Moscow. And there are a couple of United States players playing with that team as well. Yale, uh, Ava Bush and Leanne Robinson. Shannon Box didn't hear the approaching footsteps nicked away by... Formiga, who tried her luck, didn't she? Hope Solo was a long way out of her goal. I like that she's looking for that, though. Overall, though, first 10 minutes for the United States, a better start than what we saw against Japan. Yeah, much more cohesive, isn't it? Uh, much more possession, and uh, the passing just seems to be a little crisper than it was two days ago. They have a bit more time on the ball. Japan was pressing them a bit. but it's still sharper. Brazil, as I mentioned, played a recent friendly uh, in Foxborough, Massachusetts against Canada and lost 2-1. They also interestingly played a game against uh, Franklin Pierce, a college team from New Hampshire. They played that game in Framingham, Mass, just outside of Boston, where there's a huge Brazilian population. Not all of that squad has come here to Japan, though, with Marta being the most notable uh, absentee. This is unusual, though, for Brazil to have these games. I mean, Brazil, with their women's side, is known to come into a big tournament like a World Cup or an Olympics having not even been together. I mean, it's amazing that they do so well. They use the group stage as kind of their warm up. So, that is at least an encouraging sign to see that they're they're putting some games in place for their squad before they actually get to the tournament. Abby Wombach, who had that early shot off the bar inside 60 seconds. Goals in her uh, first five games against Brazil, and then none in the following four against Brazil until the 122nd minute in Dresden. Look back at that piece you did with Abby Wan back, uh, back in September, Julie, and uh, the fact that so many people still come up to her and think that the game against Brazil was the final. <laughs> it's the game they remember. <laughs> Rachel Bueller, who was uh, infamously sent off in that quarterfinal, rather uh, unjustly, most people thought. She made good progress here. The cross from Wombach. No one able to get on the end of it. But, one, but uh, Box slides in. Yeah, a lot of that sort of possession for the US in the attacking third. In and around the Brazil penalty area. Early goings here at the uh, Kirin Challenge Cup. We're about 25 miles outside of Tokyo, uh, Tokyo Bay in uh, Chiba, a city of close to a million itself. The Fukuda Denshai Arena. 
Mother Nature playing its part in the proceedings here with the game brought forward four hours from its original kickoff time. And it has to have an impact as a on the playing side, Julie, when you're when you're planning to kick off at 8 p.m. local time and suddenly it's 4 p.m. Yeah, it, but you know, as a player, you just learn to roll with it. I think that's the beauty of successful teams. You adapt. Abby Wambach. Brought down there by uh, Diane. You might remember Diane, it was, who scored that early own goal after 74 seconds in uh, Dresden to give the United States the perfect start. She also had her penalty kick saved by Hope Solo in the shootout. Here's Lauren Cheney now. Cheney's delivery is right on the money. It was the perfect placement from Cheney and uh, Abby Wambach feeling that she may have been held as she strove to reach that ball. She did get on the end of it, but couldn't keep it down. Very good ball in as well. Be one back who's uh, second all time in goals now for the United States. 134 of them. O'Reilly. It's nearly all one way traffic, isn't it? Cheney. Space here for Lloyd. Our memories of a famous Olympic final winner from Carly Lloyd back in 2008, perhaps. Better rhythm overall. Heather O'Reilly getting involved. And you can see the space the United States have. Brazil just playing very low pressure, deep. United States is going to take advantage of that if they don't press a little bit more. Too much time on the ball. You give the United States that much time, they're going to punish you for it. Well, the U.S. unbeaten in five straight meetings against Brazil. Their last loss in the World Cup semi-final in 07, not far from here, in China. Who we haven't mentioned much yet, Adrian. It's Alex Morgan. And Morgan uh, struggling to get a look early, isn't she? And that's an area the U.S. can really exploit today because the two center backs for Brazil lack a bit of pace. Erica and Diane. They're going to want to expose that and go with Morgan's speed right up that middle. Cristiane. Who is uh, part of that fearsome tandem with Marta. Two of them have scored such a huge percentage of Brazil's goals over recent years. There's a free kick here for the United States to work with, though. Diane trying to get things organized at the back. And it's Christy Rampone with the service. Oh, it might break in the box and does for Carly Lloyd. And she made no mistake from point blank range. She's done it again against Brazil. US always so dangerous on set pieces, and especially when you have a team that drops like they do Brazil on this set piece. And that's an area you want to clear out for your goalkeeper typically. Dropping and it's just chaos in front of goal. Carly Lloyd in the perfect spot to clean it up. Good ball in by Christy Rampone. That's a ball that should be cleared out by a goalkeeper coming in. That space should be entirely hers. Yeah, there seemed to be an element of confusion and indecision at the back, didn't there, for Brazil? The bounce favored the U.S. and Carly Lloyd did the rest. 
And you can see the United States has clearly scouted that because they keep dropping someone really deep even behind that Brazil where that Brazil line is holding. Knowing they're dropping fast. Shannon Box. The U.S. have the breakthrough, as they did in Dresden, not quite as early here, in Chiba. Is Taish, she's only 18. And uh, Formiga bowled over by Carly Lloyd, and there'll be a, an opportunity for Brazil to respond. Formiga always present. She's always going to be around the ball. At her uh, time, didn't she, in the uh, United States, playing for FC Gold Pride and the Chicago Red Stars, amongst others. Now, on Saturday, the MLS Game of the Week returns. David Beckham and the Los Angeles Galaxy visiting unbeaten Sporting Kansas City. The game of the week, Saturday 4 Eastern on ESPN, ESPN 3, and also live on WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. That should be something really special, given the way that uh, Sporting Kansas City have started the season, the Peter Vermees. Kai, the Kai feature coming up as well, Kamara. Yeah, I've heard about that, Kai Kamara. We sat down with him at his home in Kansas City. What a great story he has, having been born and raised in Sierra Leone in the middle of that civil war. I look forward to seeing that. Look forward to seeing uh, Kamara as part of that uh, really attacking Kansas City side they've put together. But it's Brazil who are on the attack here. A really good opportunity. And this free kick, it's Hosanna who's standing over it. <laughs> She's going to hit this left footed. Hosanna's curler. Not a bad effort. Hope Solo will feel she had it covered all the way, though. You're going to have to hit something pretty special from there to get by Hope Solo. She had that clearly covered. Just, uh, a mix up at the back, and it may still prove to be uh, a bad one for the use. Taishi's cross! Well, they're appealing for handball. There may have been an element of that ultimately, but uh, the US almost digging themselves a hole there defensively. And these are the areas the US will look at with still a few months out and say, okay, these are the things we're going to have to get a little bit cleaner on. Those type of mistakes in a big tournament. When it comes Olympics time, are the kind of things that lead to your downfall. You have to say, that was a let off. Brazil had their opportunity to equalize almost immediately. Here's Alex Morgan. We've been waiting for her to really get involved. Her pace was too much to handle there. It was chopped down. Uh, Esther in on the challenge. Another great opportunity for the United States, having controlled much of this game, to say, okay, let's let's really grab hold of it here. Cheney pulling the string. Shannon Box is there! Oh, and it's a terrific header from Shannon Box. Powerful and down. And nothing Barbara could do about it. The U.S. have a two-goal lead. Great ball in by Lauren Cheney on that back post. And Shannon Box just out jumps her defender. And the U.S. again so dangerous on these set pieces because they have so many targets. And you can see Erica there on that back post just not tight enough. Great finish by Shannon Box. She's been watching that Abby Wombach header in the quarterfinal, isn't she? It's a splendid header from Box, who, if you weren't with us uh, for the uh, early morning game against Japan two days ago, 
went public with uh, some information, Julia, that you were a part of disclosing and an illness she's been battling for some time. She talked finally about having lupus, which is an autoimmune disease. More uh, good work here for the US from Alex Morgan. Cheney. Brazilian defense has never looked comfortable, really, right from the off. The crossbar rattled inside the first 60 seconds, and every time the US have come forward, they look like they have the ability to undo the defense. Almost another opportunity there for one back. And you can see the big gaps. I mean, look at the space. Abby never has that much space. U.S. doing very well just to take advantage of it. Abby Wambach, who uh, rather mischievously, mi mischievously, perhaps could barely get the word out, Julie, has been linked <laughs> with uh, a move to... Japanese club side while the US have been here. They've really been treated like rock stars, but Abby Wambach more than any other US player has attracted crowds and attracted a lot of attention, and some of that attention coming from the chairman of a local club, Kobe. So, yes, yeah, saying he wanted... Wouldn't it be great if Abby Wambach played in Kobe? To which, of course, she said, yes. <laughs> Maybe one day. Maybe one day. I can become a teammate of uh, Sawa, was the way she put it. That's the team where uh, the Japanese legend Homare Sawa plays her club football. Cristiane, this is promising for Brazil, and it was just beyond the reach of Esther. Franciele. Erica with the cross. And that's uh, sliced away by Christy Rampone. Christy Rampone, who was uh, 36 now and uh, first lady of soccer moms. You can see number five, Erica, number four, Diane on that back post for Japan. Osana in front of them, those are their three targets typically on these set pieces. U.S. going with two post players. I noticed in the Algarve Cup when Japan scored on them in a corner kick, they only had one on the near post. Gone back to two. Formiga. Ah, and as a player, you think, gosh, what a wasted chance when that, those types of balls come in. see it so often in all levels of the game, don't we? This is uh, a battling effort and uh, a huge shot that just went wide. Well, it was uh, Hosanna. Really causing problems with her uh, persistence here. And really a good effort here, because she just takes that first touch and gets by La Pelvet, almost on frame, to make a half chance into something. Just bodies her way past La Pelvet. Rosanna, who plays her club football in France with uh, Olympic Lyonnais. We have another uh, Champions League semi final to look forward to. Throw in. The US was cleared. Kelly O'Hara. Decent give and go, but a be cut out fairly easily by Christy Rampone. And still smarting from that challenge is Franciele. Taish. Trying to play her way 
into the Olympic squad. There's uh, another Brazilian player down. Picked off by Esther. ESPN 2's coverage of the Barclays Premier League continues Saturday. Sunderland take on Tottenham Hotspur. That'll be Saturday, 7.30 a.m. Eastern on ESPN 2. Cross coming in here is a decent one, and the header back across and in. But it's not going to count. The referee has seen an infringement. The linesman, I think, playing a part in that decision too. Cristiane thought she'd... Uh, Got one back for Brazil, and it's not going to count. And here's Formiga all the way, center midfielder, making that run in behind the defense. Cutting it back. I'm not sure if they're calling offsides from that initial run in. Must have been what it was, Julie, because there was nothing wrong with the header. There was no infringement in the penalty the area. Line. The letter of the law is the flag doesn't come up until the player actually touches the ball. <laughs> that long run down the touchline was just out of our camera shot, but the flag came up and Christiana was denied. Half an hour in, in Chiba. Alex Morgan taking it in a strike, getting to the byline. Oh, it's a rather loose. Flap at it by Barbara, but no damage done. And the counter attack is on here. Again, stymied by the dreaded flag. And again, Formiga in that midfield, controlling the tempo. Well, we've reached the half an hour mark and we are going to see the first uh, change in the game. Amy Lapelbert is going to make way for Becky Sauerbrunn. Oh, oh, Stephanie Cox, sorry. It's thinking number four, but it's 14. Stephanie Cox coming on for the Pelberts. And now remember, the U.S. can only take 18 players to the Olympics versus 21 they were allowed to take to the World Cup. So that's three players. Pia's got a shame off that roster. And you're going to see her start looking at Stephanie Cox is one of those that she's going to have to look at. Heather Mitz is another one in that right back position. She may get some time today. Do you think it's the, the fact that it's uh, Stephanie Cox's birthday had anything to do with her uh, coming on in this early stage? She turns 26 today. Nice birthday present, isn't it, from... Here's Sundhaga. Don't want to have an hour's playing time, she says. See her club uh, listed as the Boston Breakers, so she has actually just signed in the last couple of days with the Seattle Sounders women's team. There's the free kick and an open header. The flag didn't come up. That would have counted. Amazingly, there were four U.S. players there behind the line of Brazilian defenders. Abby Wombat could scarcely believe her luck, I'm sure. She, she probably was so surprised she was so wide open. Look at her straight in. And as a player, you just never want to get caught raising your hand, hoping that the referee is going to raise their flag in the same manner. Now, there are obviously some teething problems at the back for George Barcelos's new defensive system. We saw at the World Cup, famously, uh, Brazil playing that sweeper sometimes under Clayton Lima, and that sweeper was sometimes 20 yards behind the other defenders. So there was no offside trap there. What an interesting system that was. There was no shape. And then talk about it, you just had players all over the place. Formiga. Brazil. Definitely grabbing at more possession. Starting to ask more questions in the last few minutes. The 
Goals, though, from the two central midfielders, Carly Lloyd and Shannon Box. Still have the US in great shape. It's the back of uh, Georges Barcelos there, who uh, was in charge the last Olympics. And Brazil lost in the final to the United States. And you remember, that was the United States team without Abby Wambach who had injured herself, in fact, broken her leg against Brazil, hadn't she, in a, in a pre-Olympic tournament yeah, friendly? Yeah, final send-off right before. <laughs> Unable to connect, but again, you're seeing, which I think is a great sign for the United States, Kelly O'Hara on that left side getting forward. And the game against Japan, I mean, Kelly O'Hara is a attacking player who's now playing left back and yet I think Amy LaPelva got forward more than she did in that game against Japan. Have to have that instinct now as an outside back to get forward. Well the date in uh, both teams mind at the moment is July the 25th. That's when the London Olympics Soccer tournament starts. It's actually two days before the opening ceremony that they'll get underway. In fact, a lot of the US players have already mentioned what a what a dream it would be for them to reach that final because the final is going to be at Wembley Stadium. The draw, incidentally, will come up later in this month, April the 25th. The US will find out who they're going to play with three groups of four. Brazil will be there, Japan will be there, three of the top four teams in the world, but Germany won't be. Still incredible to me. Brazil have slipped down to number four in the latest FIFA rankings. Being usurped by uh, Japan. One back falls kindly for her. Couldn't take full advantage though. Those are the shots that you look for on a day like today when it's so slippery, so wet. Barbara hasn't been their starting keeper much. Andrea has been starting for them. And Take your chances with that. Well, every goal Abby Wambach scores brings her one closer to the all time record belonging to Mia Hamm. There's literally nowhere to go there for, uh, for Miga. Hemmed in near her own goal line. idea from the throw but the bobble took it away from Lauren Cheney the United States have only lost twice to Brazil in 28 meetings and only one of those uh, losses was outside of Brazil they lost uh, Sao Paulo in 1997 and haven't been back to Brazil since as Carly Lloyd drives on opportunity again for Alex Morgan but unable to take full advantage were you part of that trip to Brazil in 1997 Julie I know sometimes you don't remember all the <laughs> I can't even remember yesterday. <laughs> I was actually. That was a memorable trip. One nil defeat in Sao Paulo. It's all I can tell you. But yes. I can also tell you the US have never been back since then. <laughs> it was an ugly one nil defeat as well. I remember that. Cheney. They've been able to find those pockets of space, those seams in midfield almost at will. 
Cheney and Box and Lloyd have really had the running of the show here. And here's more from Carly Lloyd. Shannon Box didn't hear the approaching footsteps. And it's dispossessed the attack is on here for Cristiane. They have numbers, four against four for Brazil, if they can use it. Well, that's not the way to use it. Uh, you can see Christian knows it herself. Uh, you take advantage of that. Good numbers on that counter and just a wasted opportunity. And you think back to that goal that was disallowed and what a momentum shift that could have been for Brazil. If it stays as is, you go in at halftime knowing you're close to getting back in this game. If it's 2 1. We've already seen one substitution for the United States, Adrian and Stephanie Cox. I think you're going to see quite a few more at halftime, as we mentioned, and being one of the few opportunities Sophia Sunhaga has to look at some of the players possibly on the bubble. Maybe get a look at Megan Rapino, yeah. Sydney LaRue. Lori Lindsay's on that bench. And these are some of the hard decisions P is going to have to make. And there have to be some heavy legs out there. Some of these players remember went 90 minutes just two days ago and they've had to, a travel day in between. Albeit a rather luxurious travel day on the bullet train. Back down uh, towards the Tokyo area from Sendai. One back, nicely done! Oh, and Heather O'Reilly. Shut out by Barbara. And it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, and Barbara won the duel. Oh, what a nice little ball played in there. Look at the pace on that, and she cuts it in behind. Heather O'Reilly's gonna want that one back. That's one of those that finishes off a game for you. 2-0. Great halftime position, 3-0 would have been uh, absolutely tremendous. But Barbara coming up with a big save. She is the backup goalkeeper for Brazil, remember, Andrea. Normal number one, she picked up a head injury in the game against Canada at Foxborough and had to be stretched off. She is here and on the bench. But Barbara getting the start. U.S. will be pleased, though. Better movement off the ball, more fluid. I think for Brazil, they're going to go in at halftime and say, OK, how can we comp make our defense more compact? I mean, look at the gaps. Their back line played really high against Canada last week, and I think the adjustment they made is now they're dropping really deep, and it's just acres of space in that midfield. Creates such a problem. If your back line is so so deep behind you, that was a fairly rambunctious challenge there from Diane, who's captain for the day. A little bit surprising that Aeline is left out of the starting lineup. The normal captain, Diane, who won't want to remember Dresden, will she? An own goal oh. and a penalty miss. The only penalty miss in the shootout. Okay. Should say a penalty save, shouldn't we, by Bob Solo, because it was an excellent save as the free kick comes in, and Barbara! Well, it wouldn't have counted, because one back was offside. So he's got a break for Abby. Yeah, had exactly. two three especially, chances. especially when you have your nearest defender is four yards away. She's going to get one on those set pieces if she comes back in that second half. I would put my money on that one. Such an interesting history against Brazil, didn't she? She scored uh, a goal in the 2004 Olympic final. Truly to help you earn another gold medal. I kiss her forehead all the time still. <laughs> I know, can you imagine the cold sweats that Brazil must have at night when they wake up having nightmares about those games? Think of, think of the heartache that the United States has given them over the years. 2004 Olympics. One you just referenced. 
U.S. beat him in the final. 2008 Olympics beat him in the final. 2011 World Cup, they give up the equalizer in the final seconds. Yeah, the only reversal of fortune for them has been that uh, semi-final in 07 in China. It's a pretty uh, emphatic reversal of fortune, wasn't it? A 4-0 win for Brazil in that semi-final. Solo, of course, famously not a part of that particular game. We won't dig that back up, though. <laughs> not today. <laughs> Do stay with us at uh, half time. Uh, got Tony DeChico and Monica Gonzalez in the studio with uh, Max Britos. We'll break down all the first half highlights for you. Lots more too. Lots to discuss with uh, just who the United States are going to pick for that Olympic roster. It's going to be a tough decision for Pia Sundaga. Just 18 players she can take to London. And not many games, really. They just announced the game in May against China. It's May 27th. A game they're talking about into June, early July as a send-off. There's going to be some severely disappointed players, aren't there? A squad of 23 at the moment. And certainly 21 of those could make a very strong place for inclusion. Now then, can Brazil get themselves back in the game before the break? It was a oh, weaving and bobbing run, wasn't it, from Hosanna? And she's provided the biggest threat today for Brazil. We saw her earlier with a good chance trying to turn Christy Rampone. American fans may remember her days in WPS. She played with the sky blue, didn't she? Heather O'Reilly apparently was her favorite teammate <laughs> when she played with Sky Blue. And here is O'Reilly. Stoppage time at the end of the first half can only be seconds left. Very wet, Chiba, but not as wet as it would have been in a few hours' time. No way the game could have actually taken place had they stuck to the original kickoff time. The typhoon warning in the area. Now Morgan trying to quiet her first half. I, I hope Pia Sunaga keeps her in because she's the type of player with the center backs that Brazil has. She she can create chaos with her pace up top. She just stretches defense. I'm surprised she's had such a quiet first half. Shannon Box able to uh, hold off the challenge. The US have looked really good in this particular phase of play, haven't they? They've been able to connect. Those crisp midfield passes. Stark contrast to the Japan game as Wombach tries to. Uh, has a problem or two. It's driven across the face of goal harmlessly in the end, and that will do it. Brief thoughts, Julie, on what we've seen in the first half. I just think Brazil's playing so low pressure. They've got to step it up if they're going to have a chance in this game. Cannot give the United States that much time. So goals from uh, Shannon Box and from Carly Lloyd. Proving to be the difference, and what a difference a couple of days will make. A very different looking United States performance from the one we saw against Japan. Remember, they went in. A Welcome back to our soccer studios. The United States putting their second straight good half together after a disappointing first 45 against Japan, lead Brazil 2-0. With Monica Gonzalez and Tony DeChico, I am Max Bredos, and us three here in the studio, those two in the booth, watching this action for the first time along with you at home. Tony, uh, your thoughts on what the U.S. were able to do? Well, the U.S. started on their front foot. They looked sharp. Brazil looked disorganized, <laughs> uh, tentative, and 
That's what happens. USA capitalized on a couple of uh, set pieces. What stood out for you, Monica? Well, like Julie mentioned, the Brazil line is playing very deep. So I think the U.S. forwards did a good job in realizing it by the end of the half they were checking back in front of them. So now it's important for the midfielders to combine with the forwards, and I think the midfielders will be able to get in all day. The United States came out with uh, a, a lot of momentum, and they went right at the Brazilian goal. Let's show you what happened in the first 45 minutes. Two goals, and they didn't waste too much time. Perhaps could have added more to that rainy afternoon in Chiba, Japan. 18 minutes in. As Here's a dangerous set piece, and Carly Lloyd is uh, left by a stare, and you know she's just not going to miss from this uh, part of the field, just at the six-yard line. And they were dangerous on all their set pieces. 36th career goal for Carly Lloyd. And the, uh, we continue to see that disorganization in the back, Monica, from the Brazilians. Right. Here's a great cross to the far post. And Erica's marking box. But she's got her back. Watch here. Watch here. She's got her back to Boxy. She's watching the ball. And Box just heads it home. Shannon Box is her 23rd career goal in the United States, up 2-0. The no goal, and we were talking about this one, Tony, and perhaps a, a rule that we would like to see changed in world soccer. Well, Brazil's trying to get in the game. Formiga crosses it, but evidently it went over the end line as it bent into uh, uh, the forward's head and was called a no, uh, a no goal. But I agree with you, Max. We'd like to see that turn into a legal play. Yeah, it takes away from attractive attacking soccer, and the more goals, the merrier, I would imagine. <laughs> we could all agree on that. When we return, we're going to take a closer look at what this U.S. team should look like by the time the London Olympics roll around. Shannon Box scoring the second in the first half, her first goal in over a year. We'll be right back. ESPN's continuing coverage of Major League Soccer will continue on Saturday as surging Sporting Kansas City 4-0 over the first month of the season. Take on struggling L.A. coming off a 3-1 loss at home to the New England Revolution. It's all coming ahead on Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. KC, L.A. on ESPN. Welcome back here in the studio. The London Olympics begin July 27th. The soccer competition begins two days earlier. So this 23-woman roster to be trimmed down to 18. Some tough decisions, cer certainly, for Pia Suntaga. And Tony, we're going to help her along the way with a look at what she has ahead of her. With goalkeepers, we do believe Hope Solo and Nicole Barnhart are in. But let's look at the defenders. There are eight of them. And how do you see this shaping up? Well, I, th I think... Even though we're still early with roster decisions, six defenders will go. Obviously, the four that started uh, both these games in Japan. So that leaves uh, Stephanie Cox, uh, Becky Sauerbrunn, and Heather Mitz. <clears throat> I think one of those will be left off. The latter two certainly are hoping I, to get in. And I think Becky Sauerbrunn is probably in. I, rem I remember talking to Christy Rampone asking her, who do you think is going to be the person that takes over your leadership role when you when, when you retire? And she mentioned Becky Sauerbrunn. Becky Sauerbrunn is probably the most vocal of all of those players on the back line, so that's very important. Hopefully get a look at her in the second <laughs> half. Eight midfielders filling a variety of roles, Tony. Yeah, with well, three central midfielders, so I think Lori Lindsay's in. And then you've got to make some decisions out there on the flank. I think Megan Klingenberg's probably on the outside looking in. Uh, Rapino, I believe, will be in based on her uh, performance in the World Cup. So Heath and maybe even Amy Rodriguez, who can play forward, may be under consideration here. Versatility can be huge. We certainly will play in Amy Rodriguez's favor. Four forwards, Tony. Uh, big names amongst them. Well, you're not going to leave off <laughs> Abby Wambach or uh, Alex Morgan. And Lauren Chaney, who's also been playing in the midfield, is listed as a forward. So, and I believe uh, Coach Sunaga likes Sidney LaRue. You know, Sidney LaRue and Alex Morgan played with me on the 2008 team. They'll develop a strong relationship. So, it's not easy yeah, out there. I think you've got to take all four of those girls. It's been very exciting. That means Amy Rodriguez <laughs> might be left. Out. I, I, I would take Sydney LaRue over Amy Rodriguez. Wow. Yep. So the debate will continue on. We'll see uh, what rings true by the time that roster takes shape, which will occur later this month. But one person who's been tremendous in 2012 has no doubt about whether what she'll be doing this summer uh, is Alex Morgan. Right. And, and here's a, a testament to her productivity is the amount of goals that she's scored. 
this year. She's done a fantastic job. Here you see these numbers. This is goals per 90 minutes. And of course, she hasn't had as long a career as these guys. But what, what this shows is the pace at which she's scoring goals early in her career. And she passed the first big test, which was going from super sub to starter. There were a lot of people that said she wasn't going to be able to, to stay at that intensity for 90 minutes. She's passed that test. And for now, for her, her next test is going to be, can she keep up this pace? Or how long can she keep up this pace until the Olympics? The second half will be very interesting to see many of those names that we talked about and whether they could make use of these final 45 minutes in Japan. The United States up 2-0 over Brazil in soggy conditions in Chiba. We'll get it back out to Adrian and Julie for the second half on our return. Welcome back, everyone, to Chiba in Japan. Heading set for the second half here with the United States in great shape, leading at Brazil by two goals to nil. Adrian Healy joined by Julie Foudy and some changes to report. Let's have a look at our Gatorade Recover. Tonight's substitutions fueled by Gatorade. Sour Brun, as we all expected, in for Rampone. Thought it would be Bueller, but Captain Christy Rampone getting a break, one she doesn't get very often. And Rapino in for Heather O'Reilly on that right side of midfield. There is Becky uh, Saubron. I heard uh, Tony and Monica Max talking about her at half time. Maybe one that uh, Pia Sundhage is still looking at for a place in the Olympic 18. Interesting to see how she performs alongside Rachel Bueller. It's not often the uh, United States defense doesn't contain the name of Christy Rampone. No. It's been close to ever present. She doesn't get many breaks. And Megan Rapino, of course, on to reprise her never to be forgotten role against Brazil in that semi final. Remember, she came on and delivered that pinpoint cross for Abby Wambach in that 122nd minute in Dresden. Two changes also should talk about for Brazil. Aline, their uh, long-standing captain, has come on. We were a bit surprised she didn't start. There she is. She wears number uh, three. And uh, Graziele has also come in as a striker, replacing the young uh, Taish. So you imagine, George Marcelos had plenty of defensive concerns at halftime, and uh, Aline... On to try and give them some solidity and shape. Abby Wambach thinking she was playing American football and not football there. <laughs> Aline tackling her. Sauerbrunn back to uh, Hope Solo. Opportunity here for the Brazil and uh, wide open in space. That's the substitute. Actually, it was Hosanna, and she would love to have that back. Really should have at least hit the target here, Hosanna. And you can see for the United States, Stephanie Cox way out wide's got to pinch in a little bit because look at that gap in there. Hosanna should at least get that on target. Carly Lloyd picking up the free kick. If you're just joining us again, Brazil without Marta. Five-time FIFA Women's World Player of the Year. Not released by her Swedish club for this uh, Kirin Challenge Cup in Japan. And now it appears without Formiga in the midfield. <laughs> Galine came in for Formiga. May have picked up a little knock in that first half. Because she was... Con she was the most dangerous threat out of midfield for Brazil in that first 45. And if uh, Rampone is described as uh, a permanent fixture for the U.S., I think you could say the same about uh, Formiga for Brazil. So both sides losing uh, stalwart performers for the second half. Yeah. 
United States played a Japan team two days ago without their star, Omari Sawa. Doesn't seem to make much difference, though. Japan is still able to uh, dominate in many respects of the game. Sauerbrunn has made a solid start. She only played one game at the World Cup, didn't she, Becky Sauerbrunn? The semi-final against France after uh, Rachel Bueller had been sent off in the quarterfinal. Talk about the pressure of coming into a World Cup. You walk into that semi-final for your first start, and she did an excellent job. Looked like a veteran out there. And that's what she brings to the back line for the United States. She has a real calming presence offensively. Defensively, Reads the game well, and there is Formiga with her leg bandaged up and icing. But she is a calming presence offensively. She settles the ball, play makes well from that center back role, and then she's great at anticipating the game. Reminds me a lot of Carla Overbeck. Just two steps ahead of everyone else reading plays. She's winning just her 20th cap for the United States today, Becky Sauerbrunn. And as Monica Gonzalez mentioned at halftime, she is going to be that next leader of the back line. She is stepping into the breach, but still trying to uh, press on. Looked all at sea, didn't they, really, the Brazilians for the first 20 minutes, particularly defensively. That's where the uh, United States really prospered. Came back into it more as the first half wore on and looked like had a perfectly good dis uh, goal disallowed, Julie. That would have changed the dynamic of this game. Yeah, that was such an unfortunate break for Brazil. We've seen that replay, and I... I still disagree with that one. That's an incisive pass, though, here. And, uh, what a challenge that was from O'Hara. Needed to be timed to perfection. As uh, Graziella was on her way. And O'Hara just getting caught a little bit. You can see those gaps. And, and that's something that's going to happen when you have some new players playing on that back line as the United States does. Graziella, the substitute, has been on the fringes of this Brazil squad. Actually played in the 2004 Olympics, just one game. Hope Solo. Punch well placed, away from danger. Megan Rapino able to win it back, though. Playing on the opposite flank in this second half. The one she uh, patrolled in the uh, quarterfinal in Dresden so memorably. Rapino on the ball now. Another who's just signed with Seattle. The Sounders uh, W League team coming together very nice. Quite some team they're putting together, Julie, <laughs> with Hope Solo and Alex Morgan. Sydney LaRue as well. It's the W League, which is about to enter pre-season. Of course, how much uh, they'll be able to call on the United States players is open to debate with the, the Olympics really dominating most of the summer. It's still nice to have a, a place to go back and, and play to play with when you have those breaks. Instead of kicking the ball against a wall, as I used to do. <laughs> I'm sure you did it pretty well. <laughs> Gets a little bit monotonous. Well, the wall always passes back, Julie. <laughs> Can't say that about every teammate, can you? Free kick here. For Franciella. to get back into this one. Now, Alex.
Alex Morgan. This real uh, chance to settle into possession in the second half. Rapino is open here for one back, but she only has eyes for goal. Ends up with Megan Rapino anyway. And a bad looking cross, tall with Carly Lloyd, the intended target. I have a feeling Megan Rapino would have had a quiet word with Javi if that one hadn't bounced off a defender and got to her anyways. But this is the opportunity, 45 minutes for Megan Rapino to show why she should be on that roster come July. They have a lot of depth, the United States, at that outside midfield position. Well, that seems to be where the competition is at its fiercest as uh, our studio panel discussed half time it could be some tough decisions for Pierre Sundar to make you heard them say maybe uh, maybe Rodriguez is one to miss out which would have seemed almost inconceivable uh, nine months ago but look at look at that position you've got Rapino who's in now you have Heather O'Reilly who she came in for Cheney can play out wide Tobin Heath can play out wide. I think what Amy Rodriguez has going for her is she's got the versatility to play up front as well. And some yawns on the uh, Brazil bench. Rather strangely, but we're not keeping them awake. <laughs> this game, uh, remember, moved forward four hours. It was uh, supposed to be an 8 p.m. kickoff, but the impending uh, bad weather, which is already here, to say it's going to get a lot worse. Once the kickoff to be moved forward, and thus, of course, so many of the crowd that would have attended unable to change their plans. It's the middle of a, a work day in Japan. It's the city of a million people, Chiba, just outside of Tokyo. And this is where you, you want to see the U.S. get very sophisticated and just the way they're playing the game, holding the ball, moving it. I mean, you saw Japan do it so well in the game two days ago. It gets so frustrating as a player to have to chase. I want to see someone from that midfield from the United States play make, connect the forwards. And that, that's going to be the constant challenge for them is who's going to grab a hold of the game. Brazil still have this tag, don't they, in uh, women's international football of being the eternal bridesmaids. They've so often finished second or third, still never won a major title. Good pressure by Rachel Bueller. They haven't won, and you look at Marta, five-time World Player of the Year for all the accolades she's won, yet she, she still hasn't lifted a World Cup trophy. Still hasn't stood atop the Olympic podium. Now that, that's got to hurt. That's got to have some raw emotion in it. Can you imagine this summer in London will be the uh, last uh, such opportunity for uh, for Miga. Marta may still have plenty more left in her. It's still relatively young, isn't she? Seems to have been around forever. Only in her mid 20s. Same can be said of uh, some of the uh, United States veterans, perhaps uh, Christy Rampone, chief amongst them. Good ideas by the United States, though. And it has earned them another corner. Be their first of the second half. Is it Abby Wombach time? We saw her crash a shot against the crossbar in the early seconds of this game it's as close as she's come she's had a couple of free headers as well this time it's worked short and that didn't work out for the best follow-up cross but one backs not going to be able to reach that espn 2's coverage of the barclays premier league will continue on saturday as sunderland takes on uh, Tottenham Hotspur, the Barclays Premier League presented by Sonosight on ESPN2 and the ESPN3. That's Saturday, 7.30 a.m. Eastern. 
unless there's a huge storm system that moves into Sunderland and they have to kick off uh, four hours earlier. <laughs> we did today here. It's where my in-laws live. They are known for large storm systems <laughs> moving in re quite rapidly there. I've experienced it. Here's Sundhaga with some copious notes. What do you think's written down there, Julie? I'm trying to read them, I can't quite manage it. A 94th game in charge, Pia Sundog, a third overall in terms of uh, games coached for the US national team. April Heinrichs is first, and uh, our very own Tony De Chico in second place. It's in games coached. Fifth year in charge. It'll be a second Olympics. Here, Sundar got all coaches trying to balance a core of veterans with blending in new additions to the squad. Do you, do you think she's getting the balance right at the moment? I had actually hoped she would take a look at some younger players. I still think there are some really good under 23s out there. Not because I have a Stanford bias, although I do. <laughs> Cam Levin from Stanford can play up top, can play outside back. We've got Christian Press from Stanford. I mean, a lot of Melissa Henderson, Notre Dame. You have some really good under 23 players in there. And I know the time between the World Cup and the Olympics, it's hard to work in some young blood, but. You see Sydney LaRue up there, I like that. Well, here is uh, a younger player who has been given an opportunity, and plenty of them in recent years, mainly off the bench, Tobin Heath, who was the youngest player at the last Olympics for the United States back in 2008. She was there as a 19-year-old. So what this will do is Cheney will move inside, is my guess. Unless, yeah, Cheney's moving inside. Hope Tobin Heath's going out wide. And I, and I like this because what it does is it puts Cheney in that hole, in that number 10 role, where she sits in behind the forwards. And you move Shannon Box a little bit deeper, and then you have a little bit more of a connection behind those two forwards because I think that's something that's lacking sometimes for the United States is who's linking those forwards and midfields together. You're just not seeing enough of an Alex Morgan and an Abby Wamba connecting with the midfielders yet. Cheney, a great World Cup, didn't she? Two goals and that three assists. That was mainly as a left midfielder. And didn't play too big a role in the final either, where she picked up that ankle injury. Yeah, which was so unfortunate. She got subbed out at halftime, and she just is such a dangerous presence in front of goal. Has such a nose for it. What that change does do is uh, pair up Kelly O'Hara and Tobin Heath as the left side combination. Maybe Brazil will be keying in on that a little. Two of the more inexperienced members of the U.S. team. It's Tobin Heath unable to find Abby Wambach. Graziella, some more fancy footwork. She's showed a few flashes since her halftime introduction. Interesting, Graziella. She's uh, 31. She's been around for a while, but always just been on the fringes of the squad, Julie. Only uh, a little over 20 caps to her name. You can see for Brazil. It's fed into a dangerous area and taken first time. Nice shot from Franciele. Nice idea, though. Trying again to find that same great little ball in behind the back line. Just skips past Sauerbrunn. Stephanie Cox pinched in this time. Able to at least apply enough pressure that Franciele is caught off balance a little bit. But you could see, I was saying, you could see that 
the impact, though, of a Marta and a Formiga. When you don't have those two on the field, it's just not the same Brazil. And those two players have been such a presence for their side for so many years. That's a, a lot of experience, a lot of uh, tactical noose. No small amount of skill that is missing for Brazil. Offside here. And they've always uh, had no shortage of individual flair, have they, the Brazilians? But times have been constrained by their tactical systems and their organization, perhaps. About how popular soccer is in Brazil, we should be seeing so many 15-year-olds, 14-year-olds, 16-year-olds coming out of that country, and you just don't see it for the women's side because it's not organized. It saddens me because you know there must be more Martas coming through. 20 minutes into the second half here. The uh, Fukuda Denshi Arena in Chiba. And as we were at halftime, the United States leading 2-0 after a 1-1 draw against Japan to open up the Kirin Challenge Cup. It's a three-team tournament featuring uh, the top three, or three of the top four teams in women's international football. Germany, the only absent name, as they will be this summer, the London Olympics, as Vanciele makes another forward dash. This time, though, Rachel Bueller has the measure of her. Pino with a quick sharp give and go and fortunately for her the ball just uh, didn't give too much hope there to Stephanie Cox. Birthday girl, Only two substitute appearances at the World Cup. Rapino who did score in the World Cup, that win against Colombia. see how Brazil plays this set piece because we've seen them not put much pressure on Abby Wambach. She's been standing alone there. There they have Aline on her. Stephanie Koch with a free kick. Morgan is there! Is it Morgan? Oh, I was going to say it was Morgan time again, but... This time, I think the flag is going to come up and stay up. She thought her equaliser against Japan had been ruled out <laughs> for offside. This one She's will be ruled out. She's hoping the referees confer. <laughs> and, and here it is. We're not going to see the line. I'm well, not quite sure how that how that one got called myself have they from that a, angle. I was going to say, have they given that for a foul against Abby Wombat? That's all I can think, Julie. I mean, she certainly wasn't offside. It doesn't. Looks like two players for Abby and, and Aline. That's very typical of them, just battling it together. Well, we saw some strange uh, officiating decisions, didn't we, in the quarterfinal between these two, so I guess... Maybe been... that was a, a little bit of a payback for the Brazil disallowed goal. Twice taken penalty, which uh, Christiane took her originally and Hope Solo saved, and uh, she hadn't moved off her line. I think there's some slight encroachment into the penalty area, which is never called. Marta stepped up and took the second kick and put it away. It's crazy. It's Christiane. 
first real glimpse we've even had a Cristiane. We've been talking about Hassana most of the time, number 18 for Brazil. And she has been quiet. And you can see that she just needs a little bit of a window, but we just haven't seen her pulling the trigger much today. Such a talented forward. Pino did well, walking the tightrope there. Well, not so initially, but apparently the ball did just creep out of play. Abby Wambach, who I was delighted to see yesterday, now has. Uh, well, I'll come back to that because that's a dangerous back pass from Stephanie Cox, which almost got picked off. That pass was too strong. He must have been on the back foot a lot more in this second half. We saw Amy Rodriguez, didn't you, briefly uh, getting ready to, uh, to check in. And she is a rod. Five games at the World Cup, but not the final, and she's going to come on now. Here's the versatility we talked about. She has been coming in as an outside midfielder in some of the games prior to this, and now you see she can also go in on that front line as well. So no goal today for Alex Morgan. It's not often we're able to say that when it comes to a U.S. international game. It's sort of her uh, goals per minute statistic. Quite remarkable, really, Julie, putting her uh, in the lead all time at the moment. I mean, the only thing you would say is that, you know, she's been coming in as a sub late in games, so that skews it a little bit, but her productivity as a starter in just seven starts, she finally made her case to start after people clamoring for it forever, and boy, has she made her case. Ten goals in those seven starts leading the team with 12 for the year. And big goals. Those aren't the the 14-0 routes of the Olympic qualifiers even. Talking of making your case, chance for uh, Amy Rodriguez, albeit a short one, less than 20 minutes, to remind Pia Sundaga of what she's all about. Nicely angled ball, which Rapino will deliver. And Barbara down well. She hasn't had that much to do in this second half, but responded when needed. And nice ball in by Tobin Heath. Perfectly weighted. Good look by Megan Rapino. I think that's a great ball because Barbara just held that well. How many times do we see that get spilled? Box I can't repeat the trick with Rapino waiting. Megan Rapino's uh, low cross was geared towards that near post run from Abby Wombach. <laughs> On Saturday, I hope you can join us for our MLS Game of the Week. It's David Beckham of the Los Angeles Galaxy visiting unbeaten Sporting Kansas City. We'll be at Livestrong Sporting Park in KC for the Game of the Week, Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and uh, ESPN3, also the Watch ESPN app. And Julie alongside me and talk to Kai Kamara. Big piece will show at half-time in that game. What a nice guy, too. He was great. Cheney weaving away through traffic and then uh, undid all that good work. The pass for O'Hara. There is still time yet for Brazil to climb back into contention. We're not going to do it like that. It was uh, 
hungrily picked off by Becky Sauerbrunn. She's been full of energy, isn't she? Defensively, and not a bad pass either. Well, I think that was a good idea, too. You can see, again, that anticipation. She just steps players so well. She doesn't have the pace of a Rampone. I don't know many players that do, but you have a player like that that just makes up with it, makes up for it because they're so ahead of the game. The United States will find out uh, what their path towards Olympic goal potentially looks like later this month. April the 25th, the draw will be made. It's a 12-team tournament. The U.S. and Canada representing the CONCACAF region. They qualified back in January. The tournament played in Vancouver, in which the United States played five games and scored 38 goals without conceding. Actually, Amy Rodriguez, who's just come on as a substitute, helped herself to five in one game against the Dominican Republic. That will help your stats. In one half, by the way. Similar to Sydney LaRue, who did the same. I wonder if we'll see LaRue late on here. She did come on late in the game against Japan. Here's Rapino. Brazil and Colombia, by the way, will be the South American representatives at the Olympics, as they were at the World Cup. In fact, it was the same qualifying tournament for both tournaments they used in South America, talking of the uh, lack of games down there. The tournament was played back in November of 2010. Let's see Brazil playing a very high line. And so far, it's worked, but the U.S. is going to get something in behind. Canada got two goals in behind that high line. That's a neat-looking cross fizzed into the six-yard box. No end product for the U.S., but they're starting to uh, ask some more questions again. Brazilian defence that looked rattled early on by the U.S.'s approach. It's recovery here for Bueller that's needed, and in trying to get back up, she brought down Cristiane. That'll be a yellow card for Rachel Bueller. You saw red against Brazil in the quarterfinal. It's not a bad foul to give away there, though, when you slip like that. Challenge will be this wet weather, how slippery it is. The Hulk Solo hasn't had too many out and out saves to make in the game. She's going to be tested here. It's Franciele, who once played in the WPS for Sky Blue and for St. Louis. Atletica. Actually, under current Brazil coach George Barcelos. It's Franciela's ball. Eline. You can't miss her, can you? She's six foot tall. And sneaking beyond the far post, but the ball eluding her. Number one of the young breed for Brazil coming on, and Hosana is making way for Maria. Another 18-year-old. Susanna had her chances. Particularly in the first half, it seems. It's clever from Rapino. She goes for goal too! Oh, what a strike! Great save from Barbara, who managed to tip it onto the post. And Megan Rapino really caught hold of that. Now Tobin Heath taking over. US looking for the knockout punch here, perhaps. Rapino in the mix again. Barbara. Oh, she's kept Brazil in it, hasn't she? <laughs> Stephanie Cox with the tackle. Couldn't continue her run. But that's what you want to see from Megan Rapino. 45 minutes, and you know, she was looking, looking to try and just clip it in behind there. And when it wasn't on, you love that. Rip it! Sort of shots that 
Goalkeepers hate swerving, moving viciously in the air. Barbara did well just to tip it onto the bar. Covering challenge there from Erica. And especially with this wind <laughs> and this rain, crank those from the outside. Two early goals by Shannon Box and by Carly Lloyd. Still the difference here in Chiba. And there's uh, some defending to do here for the US potentially as Maureen. And she didn't make the best use of that situation. And Tobin Heath is right back on the front foot for the US. Weighing up the options. One back is one of them. And just agonizingly beyond her reach. And that's the beauty of having Shannon Box sitting in that midfield, because that all started from her. Kelly O'Hara had got caught getting forward, which is okay. You want your outside backs making those runs. But Shannon Box sitting in that holding midfield position stopped that counter quickly. And here is the Megan Rapino strike, and what a nice save that is, given the weather conditions. Barbara, a much younger goalkeeper than their first choice, uh, Andrea. She played in the last Olympic final, though. It's the US back in 2008 in Athens. Shannon Box wrong-footed. US very quickly claiming it back. Cheney and the run through the middle from uh, a rod who's brought down Amy Rodriguez seemed to have the inside track there and uh, captain she was through wasn't she Diane applied the squeeze didn't she and, uh, can't have any complaints about the yellow card and we all know the pace of Amy Rodriguez she's going to get through that one Another set-piece opportunity for the United States, and the set-pieces have proved to be productive, haven't they? And I think, I think again, given the weather conditions, you get this on target. Make Barbara save this ball. Look at the wind. You can see it on the players' uniforms. Swirling around viciously, isn't it, Cheney? And uh, Shannon Box conspiring here. Who's going to take it? Command Rapino lets it go. Box, the little dummy. Oh, it's sat up here beautifully. And Amy Rodriguez buries it with a plum. Now that's a reminder to Pia Sundhager. The message seems to be don't ignore me for the Olympics. She put some extra relish on that shot. And just scrambling around, similar to the Carly Lloyd goal that fell to her feet. Amy Rodriguez, opportunistic, drive it, drives it hard and low. Takes a deflection, deflection, nothing Barbara can do. But good pace on that one. Yeah, pretty massive deflection. Looking at the replay, wasn't it? Completely wrong for the Barber, but the, uh, the venom on the shot from Amy Rodriguez is what did the trick. And surely that is pretty much that in terms of uh, where the spoils are going in this game. Another change for the US, Heather Mitz has uh, come on, I believe, for Kelly O'Hara. Heather Mitz battling for one of those uh, right-back slots that is available. Looks like she did come on for O'Hara and Stephanie Cox now over on that left side. Playing left back now. Well, the uh, weather conditions have worsened 
considerably as this second half have worn on. There was a good reason for them moving this game. I think it would have been close, close to unplayable at the original kickoff time. It was supposed to be an 8 p.m. kickoff time, and at lunch at noon, players found out. Well, guess what? The game's going to happen at four now. This is now your pregame meal. Actually worked out well timing-wise. You want to eat about four hours before. Unless, of course, you're in high school, and I used to have a foot long, so I'm playing pastrami <laughs> and cheese right before the game. I can't believe I'd actually play like that. Steak and chips used to be the order of the day. Uh, it's good living. In England, there. right before a game. Yeah. little curry. Then Arsene Wenger came along and changed all of that <laughs> with his diet. <laughs> All this high-tech nutrition stuff. 3-0 <clears throat> to the United States. And what looks like to be a very satisfactory end. In a brief tour of Japan, the two-game Hearing Challenge Cup, which they will be in good shape to lift the trophy. They won't be here to lift it because uh, that will depend on Japan against Brazil, which will be the final game in a couple of days' time. And I think Pia will be very pleased with this, given, given that they've dominated here against Brazil today. And that even though they didn't have their best game against Japan, it wasn't anywhere near their best game, they still had the guts to pull out the point and, and come back from being a goal down to tie it 1-1. And she got to look at a lot of players against two of the top teams in the world. Teams against whom they had those epic encounters last summer in Germany were very different in results. Amy Rodriguez again. Well, a reminder to Pia Sundar, I guess she gave a couple of minutes ago, she could have uh, really cemented that reminder. And she re repeated sort of strike but she'd like to have that one back so uh, 24th international goal she scored a couple of minutes ago Shannon box And Amy Rodriguez was the third top scorer in the final WPS season. Only behind one back and Marta. Of course, the club future of a lot of these United States players remains somewhat cloudy, doesn't it? That's kind of an issue that becomes much more of an issue after the Olympics. I think actually in the short term though, it helps not having a league actually helps the US players. I don't think it helps the country in the long term because you're just not creating a big enough pool that's playing consistently, but it's exhausting doing both back and forth. And those players all said they were extremely tired at that World Cup. Beatrice has come on for Brazil. And a third 18-year-old on their roster getting some playing time here. Valuable experience for the Brazilian youngsters. It's equally, uh, George Barcelos has decisions to make and for Brazil. This will be it. There are two games here at the Kirin Cup. We don't have anything else scheduled for the Olympics. The United States will play China. At PPL Park just outside of Philadelphia at the end of May. And we think there'll be one more friendly as well in Europe. Is that right? In Europe, and apparently one here send off at home. Still uh, to be confirmed. The US look like they're going out on a high here in Japan has really welcomed them with open arms. And in these final minutes, they just don't want to give up a goal, the United States, to damper the mood going home. Come on, 
and the Algarve Cup left a bit of a bitter taste in it there. They finished third in March in Portugal. And lost to Japan. How about having never lost to Japan in 25 attempts prior to that World Cup final? They now haven't beaten them in the last three. There's a new rivalry for you. Yeah. Yeah, not many international teams have been able to prevent the United States from winning three consecutive occasions. Franciele, is there going to be uh, a late consolation at least for Brazil? Good defending by Rachel Bueller. And I know we keep talking about these roster spots, but what a nice problem for Pia Sunhaga to have such a deep squad of 23 players. Well, it couldn't have been more different, could it, from the quarterfinal? Just nine months ago in terms of weather, in terms of setting, and in terms of final outcome. Degrees of comfort for the United States. It's going to be a win, as it was in Dresden, but not quite the uh, gut-wrenching, fingernail-chewing type of win it was. It's probably better for my heart, though, Adrian. <laughs> I told you, I rewatched that game yesterday, and it's still gives you chills even when you know what happens it's a good thing we were wearing these big cans over our ears because I think I almost took off Ian Dark's head at one point with my elbow <laughs> <laughs> if it was the goal or what happened flashed me the red card on stoppage time and time Julie just to ask you what your uh, assessment is for the U United States that perhaps over both games what will Pia Sundaga have uh, learned if anything about her, her squad in these two games against Japan and Brazil well I think both Megan Rapino and Amy Rodriguez have played well in this 45 minute showcase that they had Rapino almost getting the goal Rodriguez getting the goal so they're making their case and I think Sauerbrunn as well is a, is a go. So you're looking at the, the real question marks. Mitz, Cox, Lori Lindsay we haven't seen, but, you know, is she going to take a central midfielder over another outside midfield option in like a Tobin Heath? So I think she'll be pleased. I think that that back line is the real question mark for the United States, though, in, the, in these next few months. How can they make sure that those gaps and those holes and those players who aren't as familiar playing with each other can be on the same page come July. No goals for Abby Wombach here in Japan. This is a chance again for a late consolation and Hope Solo able to tip it over the top. Graziella from a long way out here. This is probably a good decision by Hope Solo with how wet it is to try and hold on to something like that. Just play it safe. And look at the wind blowing back there. One last chance, perhaps, for Brazil to get on the score sheet here. From CLA's corner. It's well delivered. Seems as though the starting 11 is uh, pretty much set in Pia Sundaga's mind. The same starting 11 in both games here in Japan. So it'll be the supporting cast where the decisions are to be made. And that does it. The United States emerge with uh, a win and a draw from their trip to Japan and may well lift the Kirin Cup. That will depend on Brazil's game against Japan in two days' time. That does it from myself and Julie Fowley. United States beating Brazil by three goals to nil. Let's send it back to our studio with uh, Max Bratos. Max. Thank you, Adrian. Julie here with Monica Gonzalez, Tony DeChico. So the United States leave Japan with a very good taste 
in their mouth, beating Brazil and beating them impressively. Let's look at the highlights. And uh, the job was done early on, Tony. The U.S. wanted to get goals with the same 11 in the first game, and they got them. Well, Kari Lloyd started it off. Uh, she victimized a disorganized Brazil defense. 1-0 for her 36th career goal. Monica, 23rd minute. Once again, the Brazilian defense leaving some holes in the back. Shannon Box does a great job just following the ball into the far post. Gets a 23rd goal of her career. 2-0 for the U.S. <coughs> Good chance here for Brazil. This would be disallowed. The ball curled out of sight, but a nice cross nonetheless for the Brazilian attackers. They're trying to get themselves back in the game. Uh, Formiga puts in a good cross, but it's called over the end line as it curves back in, and a tough break for Brazil. Boo, boo, 68th minute. Another goal called back. We believe that they called it offside on Alex Morgan. That's an off offside call. Yeah, they should, have a, they should be able to distinguish them if they're not, but clearly not offside. An 83rd minute. Another that free is. kick for the U.S., and this time Amy Rodriguez jumps on it and buries it in the back of the net. And that was an important goal for Amy Rodriguez, I believe. Yeah. Seizing the opportunity. Who helped themselves in the second half of those players that are fighting for a spot? Who do you think, Monica? Well, the players that got on the field today had an opportunity to play, and they played well. But, you know, at the end of the day, I don't, I don't think today was a day where players decided or where the roster was decided for the Olympics. There's a and I think the Olympic roster will be decided in the competition that happens every single day in practice between now and the Olympics. She's sounding like a coach. I like it, Monica. Very good. And I don't want to encourage or discourage anyone in the U.S. player pool, but we saw 17 players today. You had the backup goalkeeper. You got 18. We shall see. Still a long way to go. We'll be right back to wrap up our coverage as the U.S. win over Brazil 3-0 and will leave Japan undefeated on, against two of the top four nations in the world. Time now for the All-State Good Hands save of the game. Megan Rapino got out there, made use of her time with this blistering effort, but denied by Barbara. And the corner of the post slash crossbar. That's your All-State Good Hands save of the game as the United States beat Brazil 3-0, but probably could have added a couple more along the way. And now for the United States. Next, it's against China in May, and we expect uh, another friendly or two along the way before the Olympics in July. We are all out of time. Hope you enjoyed as much as we did. On behalf of everyone here, Adrian Healy, Julie Fowdy, Tony DiCicco, Monica Gonzalez, I am Max Bredo.